Hey there, it's Jason from Codemanship and welcome to my lightning talk in today's video diary entry titled Seven Myths of Test Driven Development Debunked. Let's get straight into it. Myth number one, um, that TDD is the same thing as testing. So I meet a lot of teams who tell me they do TDD, but when I look at what they're actually doing, they're writing the tests afterwards. So they're, what they mean is we write unit tests, we write automated tests. Um, yep, automated tests are part of TDD, but not the point of it. The whole point of TDD is design, test as specifications, which means we necessarily start by writing the test first. We write that automated test first, and then we write the simplest code to make that test pass. So TDD is a design discipline, not a testing discipline. Very important to remember that. Myth number two, talking of design, when we do TDD, we don't do any, any upfront thinking or planning of our design. Um, no one's ever seriously recommended this. No proponents of TDD have ever recommended this. I just want to show you a book just to prove a point here. Um, this is a book called Extreme Programming Install. It's one of the early books on extreme programming. And in it, you'll find a chapter called, or a short chapter called Quick Design Session. Let's take a look at that. Yeah? Somebody planned a design up front. Now, the whole idea is you don't want to spend too long on that. When it comes to the fine details of the design, code can take care of that. TDD is really good at driving out the fine details of a design. But at a high level, you're thinking, for example, in terms of roles and responsibilities in your design, then a little bit of thinking, getting around a whiteboard, a little bit of sketching can be very, very useful. Myth number three about TDD is that it's all about unit tests. So if you're doing unit tests, that's, that's TDD. Um, TDD really is kind of a spectrum in the sense that it's not about the scope of the test. It could include, for example, a customer test or a system test or an integration test or a non-functional test. If you write that failing test first and then write the simplest solution that will pass that test, then you're doing TDD. They're all part of the same spectrum. Okay, myth number four. No teams are doing TDD in the real world on real software products and systems. Now, the reality is that thousands of teams are doing TDD and there are thousands of software products out there that have been test driven um, over the last 20 plus years. Everything from financial systems to retail systems to um, things like the BBC iPlayer, for example, many versions of that have been test driven um, to um, many of the tools that we as programmers use every day. A lot of those tools were test driven. Um, so there's, it's very unlikely that you're not gonna be using software on a daily basis that was test driven. Um, thousands and thousands of products have been test driven. It does really work in the real world, on real teams. It's not just something we do in coding dojos. I've been doing it for real for 20 plus years, and I know many, many others who have. Um, so it's definitely out there and it definitely works. Myth number five, it takes a lot longer to deliver code test driven. Um, now, I'm just going to quickly show you something. There's been a bunch of empirical studies done into this. Um, the reality is that the results of these studies when it comes to productivity are ambiguous in the sense that it doesn't really clearly show either way whether it takes longer or less time. That would suggest to me that on average it takes about the same amount of time. Now, you might say, but we're writing twice as much code, but you have to understand that code is not the bottleneck. Typing code is not the bottleneck. What we tend to forget is how much time we're spending downstream debugging code when we test it, when we leave it too long before we test it. And that extra debugging time tends to cancel out time we think we're saving by not writing tests up front. Um, if we could save that time, then we tend to find that we can produce much better results in terms of reliability of code and maintainability of code um, by writing our tests first um, without necessarily spending more time on it. So um, the answer is not necessarily, probably not. It probably won't take you longer, but the results, again, empirically, we've shown this, the results will usually be considerably better. So it's a win-win. Um, now, of course, TDD has quite a formidable learning curve, um, and that's where it gets its reputation for taking longer. People who are starting out with TDD tend to slow down quite dramatically as they learn it. Um, but once you get over that hump, um, we tend to find that it doesn't really necessarily take you any longer. Okay, myth number six is that behavior-driven development and test-driven development are different things. So 
some developers come to me and they say, Jason, we, we don't do test-driven development, we do behavior-driven development. Or they say, we don't do behavior-driven development, we do test-driven development. Usually what they mean is, we're automating our tests with Cucumber. Um, or they mean we're automating our tests with JUnit. Remember, there's a, it's a continuum, a spectrum. They're all part of the same practice. BDD and TDD are the same thing, just at different scopes, if you like. Um, part of that same continuum. So it's not an either or kind of situation. Those customer tests that we might capture in with a tool like Cucumber would be hopefully driving unit tests. What we don't want to end up with is all Cucumber tests and no unit tests or all unit tests and no customer tests and so on and so forth. Um, so they kind of complement each other. But more importantly, the tool, it's not important. It doesn't matter whether you automate your customer tests with JUnit, for example, or whether you automate your unit tests with Cucumber, it's not, that's not the point. Put the test, put the tools out of your mind. What matters is the scope of the test. If it's a customer test, then we're talking behavior-driven development here. If it's a unit test, then yeah, traditionally we might call that TDD, but they're all part of that test-driven continuum. And in their less guarded moments, proponents of BDD will admit that BDD and TDD are essentially the same thing just at sort of different levels of abstraction, if you like, different scopes. So they're, they're not different at all, and it's not an either or. So don't, 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 get, don't go down that rabbit hole, please. And finally, myth number seven. Um, there are some teams out there and some, some companies who kind of boast about, they do TDD and they boast that they're producing code that has zero defects. It's a, it's a popular hashtag, zero defects. Now, studies bear this out. It is true that TDD tends to produce code that is much more reliable than code that is where the tests are written after, because the coverage tends to be very high. And it is true um, um, that, that you can produce most of your code to a sufficiently reliable sort of quality by doing TDD. It will, it will produce most of the tests, the automated tests that you need, even though that's not the point of it. But for some code, we find that we have to go further that TDD is not sufficient. It opens the door to that. We can reuse some of our unit tests, for example, or repurpose them into uh, data-driven tests or property-based tests, um, from which we can jump off into the realms of, well, you, you know, safety-critical code, potentially. So TDD opens the door to that, and it does tend to produce code that is much more reliable, but it doesn't by itself produce code that has zero defects. Um, so you still need testing even if you're doing TDD. So um, there you go. Seven myths of test-driven development, hopefully debunked. If you don't believe me, you can let me know in the comments below and we can argue about it in a very civilized manner, I hope. Um, hope you're doing okay. Um, until the next video diary, stay safe and uh, wear a mask and take that vaccine. Ooh, controversial, yeah. <laughs>